Is that stuff heavy? Yeah. He's got hardy board. That stuff is concrete board. What is it? Hardy board. It's uh, and he it's not masonite. But he doesn't have anything strapped down. No, he doesn't. He said he thought the weight of it would keep it in there. Like he even said he had uh, rope to tie it down. I was like, you gonna tie it down? Well, I'm just gonna do. It. Okay, fine. <laughs> if it falls out again, you're on your own this time, mm -hmm. bud. <laughs> I know you're breathing heavy. My stuff must have been heavy. Well, I was trying to hurry up so it wouldn't, uh, you know, so it wouldn't. Uh, well, he's lucky we were. We were witnessing that instead of somebody else that just left him hanging. Yeah, he's just gonna drive really slow, so. He took off and that stuff went swoop. Yep. He, it just, it was sweet, just like a slide. <laughs> it really was like it was greased. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh my God, look at that. <laughs> he's lucky you saw it because I didn't see it. I was looking at the traffic ahead I watched of me. it come completely <laughs> up out of there. <laughs> she was going, no, no, no. I know, I thought I did. <laughs> That's excitement. It's my good deed for the day. That's what I said. <laughs> Hola, peeps. Just going out to do a few errands. I've got to get the truck inspected because it's like way overdue. So I'm going to go do that. Then I've got to run a couple more errands. So I'm going to bring you along with me and we can get bored together. <laughs> December of last year it was the last time I got inspected. Not good, but it'll pass inspection. I have no doubt. It's just funny. It's one of those things that you really don't look at. And four or five months later, you look down one and go, oh my gosh, this vehicle hasn't been inspected. So now I'm doing it. Got to pay for it now. So far from what I've seen, this little inspection station is the guy running it's doing a pretty good inspection on these vehicles. I've never seen them actually check, pressure check the uh, fuel filter cap to make sure there's no leaks. I've seen them kind of tug on it and turn it in a little bit to make sure, but he's checked all the lights, checked the uh, exhaust pipe on the car ahead of me to make sure nothing's loose. So it's pretty thorough inspection. It's the most thorough I've ever seen. Still waiting, and it looks like they're replacing most of the light bulbs on this car in front of me. <laughs> Being sarcastic, of course, but. He's already been in the trunk and replaced one, possibly two there, and now he's doing the uh, license plate lights. I guess you can't technically pass an inspection without any working lights. All right, uh, Texas changed their law to where you don't have to have a separate registration and separate inspection sticker. So since my registration is not up until July, the guy recommended that I come back in July. So you can, and he said that you can have it three months out, have the inspection done three months out from your uh, uh, expiration date on your tags. He said he doesn't recommend it because most people will lose the paperwork. I'm not one of those people. I'll, I'll just keep it here. But uh, if I don't have to come, if I don't have to do this till July, then I just won't do it till July. Now I got to go and check Taryn's car to make sure. Uh, when hers is up and if it's up soon or if it's already up then I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back uh, Later or maybe tomorrow. Don't know. Sure. No, no Off the top of my head, but uh, I sat there for a good 20 minutes, I guess something like that before he told me that so No big deal. I've got time. So I'll just go run some more errands right now. I am here at Harbor Freight Tools, and if you don't know what Harbor Freight Tools is, it is a tool store. But most of the stuff is, shall I say, of lesser quality, and you may get a use or tool two out of it before it breaks or something. And uh, but the reason I do come here is because they do have some stuff that is actually of decent quality and stuff that's a little less expensive than everywhere else like today i'm going in here to buy some uh, nitrile gloves that i use for uh changing the oil and doing a 
uh, jobs around the garage so I don't get my hands dirty or messed up. They have stuff like that, uh, sandpaper, things like that that can be of, of good use to you. They have a bunch of coupons you can get in the mail. You can sign up for their mailing list and get uh, their uh, monthly catalog. For example, today I'm going to buy the gloves and I may look for a couple other things, but there's a coupon here for a free tarp. I'm going to redeem that with any purchase, it says. And uh, you can collect these coupons, use one per purchase, get like moving blankets or electrical tape. Sometimes they'll have like a free screwdriver set with a purchase. And I have actually assembled a few tools that I've put in the truck just in case of a breakdown or whatnot. Just a basic set of, of uh, hand wrenches, the standard and metric sizes, a uh, set of screwdrivers, a couple of adjustable wrenches and pliers that I've gotten from here that will work in a pinch. And they're not extremely bad quality but they're not the quality of say your craftsman's your huskies uh, mat go tools or snap on or something like that those those tools the dewalt's and stuff i use for the garage my own personal use but uh i mean for buying inexpensive stuff in a pinch that will last you for an emergency use this is a good place to go so we're gonna go on in and see what we can find urgent blowout oh my gosh Let's see, here are the gloves. And you can get them for as cheap as $6.99 for 100 gloves, light duty gloves. I'm gonna get the seven mil, just because they're a little thicker, a little stronger, less likely to tear. And uh, that's uh, 50 gloves for $10. It's not too bad. One other thing I've got that um, I've been looking for, actually I need, is this magnetic paper towel holder. It, you put this on the side of your toolbox and you know put your heavy duty paper towels on there to get them out of the way. I've been wanting one of those for a while and just never got one so I saw it. thought I'd go ahead and grab it. Um, but let's, I'm going to go around and see if there's anything else that catches my eye. See they've got generators. Uh, some bigger tools back over here. Power tools, saws and stuff like that. Trailers. Back over there they've got cement mixers. Um, saws, uh, sanders, and stuff like that. I mean, ratchet straps, tie down straps. These are all the tarps. So there's a little bit of everything. You just have to kind of watch and check the quality because some of it may not be the best quality in the world. But you know, if you need a tarp pretty quick, a five by seven tarp for three ninety nine. This is the free one I'm getting here. I guess that's what the coupon says anyway. So. You need, I mean, it's flat enough you can store it anywhere in your garage and not take up a lot of room. And when it, it's there when you need it. So, can't beat it. See, you got welding supplies, gloves, uh, you know, apron, leather aprons, magnets. Back over here, you got saw blades and abrasives for your small tools. Uh, storage ideas. This is a small example of the stuff they have here. And, you know, military style ammo can. It's not ammo quality, but hey, if you're going to have this on your shelf for storing items, about $15. Uh, ammo box right here. It's a small plastic one for $7.99, $6.99. You can't beat the stuff like that. If it's not going to get a lot of heavy use, this is the place to come. tape 10 rolls for six dollars I, mean, I don't think you can get that anywhere uh, they do have a brand called chicago electric and drill master and another one central pneumatic or something and honestly that's the stuff i stay away from just because it's one of those items power tool items that will fall apart and you're probably not going to find any spare parts or spare batteries for them so stay away from that stuff. Uh, although I do have a Chicago Electric heat gun that I bought here pretty cheap. And I don't use it much, but it still works. And I've used it enough to where it's, it's paid for itself. So that was a decent buy. Another thing I bought from here was this Pittsburgh floor jack. It's a low profile three ton floor jack. Um, it works just fine. It, it's pretty heavy. That's solid made but I don't use that or any other jack without jack stands or some other kind of support. 
but this gets the job done in lifting that heavy ram that I have, and even uh, Terrence Challenger. So that was a decent buy too. You just gotta look around, look at, feel it, make sure it feels solid, and make sure the welds and everything are solid welds. Daddy got a box. Mommy. <laughs> oh, that's annoying. Oh, that's pretty. Look at that. That's really that. pretty. He said it was in mint condition. It's in me It's pretty. That is really pretty. I think that's the prettiest okay. one you've had yet. Think so? Yeah. I've been playing four string basses since I started playing. And this is the first five string I've had. Which is a ESP LTD 415. Never owned an ESP, so this is going to be an experience. Need something different. Thank you. You've been wanting a five string since we've been married. We've been wanting a five string for a while. For like seven years. As a creature of habit, you tend to not step out of your comfort zone sometimes. Well, here's the new base I bought five string ESP LTD Surveyor 415. What I'm about to do now is change these strap buttons out because I when I play I don't sit back and just pluck on the E string and just stand around I kind of get into it so I'm moving around all over the stage or whatever and if you're playing like that sometimes you get a little crazy the straps will fall off the strap buttons so I've had that happen a couple times and I swore I'd never do it again so I always invest in a set of shallow strap blocks uh, these this set right here has actually been on two different bases, and uh, I've never lost one, never dropped a base or anything. I used to use the Dunlops, but they have a ball bearing system, and those tend to fall apart after a while. Showers have never done that, so I'm going to just swap those out real quick. didn't take but a few minutes. I've already got the other ends of them on the straps that I was using, so I'm going to have to adjust those for this bigger base, but here we go. It's just as simple as unscrewing one, screwing the other in. Right there. Same thing on the other one. And uh, oh, don't forget the felt felt washer. That kind of helps keep it in place. Little brown piece of felt that goes in there. And there you have it. Strap blocks. All you do is take, look real quick. See this little hole there? There's a plunger that goes in there uh, that's on the strap part. And you pull the spring loaded plunger out, slides in there, and the plunger sits right in there. 
and you can tug on it and nothing will happen. So you can get as aggressive as you want. I've seen guys take their straps and swing their guitars and basses around like crazy. I don't get that nuts. But uh, nothing happens to the bass. It stays on the strap, and, or the strap stays on the bass, and uh, you're good to go. There we are. Well, here it is. I changed the strap locks, uh, strap buttons to the strap lock buttons earlier, and I really hadn't messed with it because I had some stuff to do. So I thought I'd go ahead and plug it in and tune it up and see what it sounds like. Since I'm not used to a five-string bass, I'm gonna have to tune it from the E up and then tune the B to the E. So. I'm not sure all the controls are on this layout, but uh, <clears throat> I'm going to have to figure that out. It's got a phasing switch right here, two EMG soap bar pickups. One looks like a regular soap bar, this one looks like a humbucker, which that's probably beyond everybody's rec uh, perception or recognition or anything. But uh, normally what I do is I, when I get a new bass, I end up uh, changing the strings on it. So I'm probably going to do it with this one since I have two sets of five strings laying around. Uh, and if you'd like to see or have a quick lesson on how to restring a guitar, or in this case a five-string bass, give me a comment in the comment section. I'll do a separate video on that. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of play around with this. I'm trying to mess around with this and then see what it sounds like. Maybe give a review. Who knows? But I'm going to play around with this. All right.